Welcome back to my channel. This is Griff speaking. And today I want to talk about despair. Recently I watched the anime Chainsaw Man. And it is very different from typical battle anime, shonen anime. Because typically shonen anime follow the hero's journey. And that those have a lot of hope. Even when times are getting tough, you're going to keep fighting for your goals. There are animes in which there isn't a... There's no reason to ever truly give up. Because you know, at the end of the day, whatever you're doing is worth it. You know that there's a reason to do anything. Chainsaw Man, however is very different it makes you feel despair there is no greater goal the main character is in a messed up situation in a messed up world doing messed up things and ultimately he is messed up too there is no redeeming qualities it's a show about total lifelessness there is no hope or reason to exist you exist simply because you exist and you do what you do simply because it's what is in front of you so watching this show made me start thinking about despair made me want to learn about it and my initial belief going into this was that despair is the most important emotion a human can feel i say that because in a weird way, when I watched this show, and it made me feel that way. I started drawing parallels to our real world. In that you wake up every day and you work just so that you can sleep and work again. The feeling of existential dread. What am I here for? What am I fighting for? Like that one meme, I forget what it's from. It made me draw these parallels and instead of feeling existential dread it made me feel at peace so that's why i wanted to research more about it and learn more about it so merriam webster to start defines despair as the utter loss of hope I want to talk about that a little bit, that even the dictionary defines it as more than just a loss of hope. And it's not feeling sad. It's not depression on another level. Because I feel that even if you are manic, you can still feel despair. I think that even if you are a billionaire with a ripped body, a six-pack, and all the fancy things you could ever want, you can still feel despair. There is no way out of it, regardless of what you do. So after defining it, let's go into my research. I watched a video from Academy of Ideas going over despair, and the main character, so to speak, in that video is the Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard says that almost everyone feels despair, and, almost, and, and those who are in denial of feeling despair are lying to themselves. He said that when people feel this way, it's because they're not making themselves into someone they know they can become. They're not becoming their truest self. And that in a very backwards way, to be self-aware of the despair, to be aware of falling behind of who you could be, it is a good sign. It means the person feeling that way will be motivated and become better. They will fight to become the person they know they ought to be. 
Likewise, those in denial are at the highest risk of being overtaken by despair. He likens it to a degenerative disease, whereas I personally view it more as being in a sinking ship. If you ignore that you have a hole in your ship that is constantly letting in water and making you sink, and you don't acknowledge it, you're going to be very happy until the ship capsizes, and then everything's over. Whereas if you acknowledge it, you can patch the hole, make the ship more sturdy, and live to see another day. Kierkegaard goes on to describe the problem with modern society in that it's plagued in conformity. Conformity allows one to neglect oneself and deny any feeling of despair. You say that you haven't climbed the social ladder enough, or that you're not pretty enough, or that you're not successful enough, and that's why you aren't happy yet. It prevents you from truly looking inwards and becoming your truest self. And I think that to become one's truest self does not mean to follow your dreams. It doesn't mean to be a CEO either. I think it means to see the world and see yourself for what it is and for what you truly are. Next, I watched Eternalized's video on existential despair, which is different but only slightly. Existential despair referring to the idea of despair over just existing rather than despair as an emotion. Their main character was Russian-Jewish existentialist philosopher Lev Shestov. Shestov's main contribution to the philosophy of despair is his definition of groundlessness, which is the uncertainty of our experience of the world. Now, I don't think that it's a bad thing to feel this groundlessness. I think that much as Kierkegaard were to say, to ignore it is to ignore the truth. Shostov further goes on to describe how faith is the only way to free oneself from groundlessness and the groundlessness brought from despair. And that despair is a prerequisite to becoming something greater. So you have a sort of cyclical loop of you have to feel despair to become groundless. And you have to feel faith to stop being groundless. And the reason you have to stop feeling this groundlessness is because that is the only way to become something greater. He wrote on how a near-death experience awakens you and how... Many people run from death. They fill their lives. They fill the void in themselves with more things, a, a raise, a new job title, new toys, food, new experiences. But you cannot truly free yourself until you quit running from death. That is when you can awaken. And that is when you see the world for what it is. You have to acknowledge death is coming for all of us. And there's no way out of that. I don't know quite how to end a video like this. Because as Shestov said, there is no one answer to get from philosophy. Philosophy is a way of life rather than a 
question to be solved. My own takeaways from my research and my thinking are that you should strive not to become someone that the world loves, and instead strive to become someone that you love. Someone that when you die, you will have no regrets. You know who you are. You know what the world is. And my other takeaway is that despair is something you should not run from. It should be something that motivates you to open your eyes. Alrighty guys, so thanks for listening to the video. I did some quick research for it. It wasn't a long project. I'd like to do a longer video essay on despair in the future because it is something I find really interesting, but at the same time, it's not something that needs to be done right now because I think right now this was just opening the door and y'all can follow me on this journey diving deeper into the concept of despair. If you have any questions or want to debate anything, drop it in the comments below. Like the video for more content and so that the YouTube algorithm keeps giving me your, giving you my videos. And I will talk to you guys next time. Peace out.